Two weeks ago, I released a video that showed how to handle the array of arrays issue with XLOOKUP. And the comments came in and people loved the choose rows and X match combination. Unfortunately, with that solution, if there's a lookup value that can't be found, it returns an error. Well, have you tried the super XLOOKUP function? It's like XLOOKUP, but it's better. We can look up multiple values and it returns multiple rows and multiple columns. What, you've never heard of it? You've never tried it? Maybe we should. If you're ready, let's get started. Here, I'm going to use the super X lookup function. I'll type equals super X lookup. The lookup value is going to be the range H6 to H9. The lookup array is the item column. Next, I come to the return array, and for that, I want columns Q1 to Q4. And let's set the if not found argument to zero. When we calculate, everything works. It spills vertically and horizontally. That's amazing. Now you won't have super X lookup in your version of Excel, but you can get it. So let's go find out how. Super X lookup is a custom function. That means we can build it ourselves. And that's what we're going to do right here, right now. But before we start, let's just remind ourselves of the issue with X lookup. If we use normal X lookup, and we look up the values from H6 to H9 in the item column and return the columns from Q1 to Q4, Excel only returns a single column. XLOOKUP won't spill in both directions. Two weeks ago, we found out that we could enter equals, choose rows, and then for the array, we could use the columns Q1 to Q4. Then for the row num1 argument, we could use X match, which would be based on H6 to H9, and looking up the values from the item column. When that calculates, it returns the results that we expect. However, if we have a lookup value which does not exist, everything fails and we get a single hash NA error. Now that's definitely not what we want. So let's see how we can resolve it. I'm going to replace the choose rows function and instead I'm going to use the index function. For the row num argument of index, I'm still going to use the array generated by xmatch. But for the col num argument of index, we're going to generate an array using sequence. We want one row and we want the column numbers based on the number of columns. So let's use the columns function and we're going to select columns Q1 to Q4. So that will give us a sequence of numbers from one to four. And now when we calculate, it works. That's amazing. We've now avoided that single hash NA error. XLOOKUP has the if not found argument. That means that if it can't find a value, it doesn't have to return the hash NA error for that value. It can return any value that we like. So let's go add that into our solution. At the start, I'll add if error, and then let's come to the end of the formula because if it is an error, let's say that we want to return zero. And then when we calculate, we get exactly the result that we want. Step by step, our solution is coming together. However, there's an important thing about XLOOKUP, and that's the fact that it looks up vertically and horizontally. Unfortunately, if we try to look up horizontally, our current solution is going to fail. I'll copy down the formula into cell H13, then I'll change the lookup value in the match so that it's referencing I12 to K12. And I will also change the lookup array to be the headers from the table. So that will be Q1 to Q4. And unfortunately, this doesn't calculate correctly. We need to change our formula so that if the lookup value is a column or a row, it will calculate the correct values. Before we add the ability to look up vertically and horizontally, let's use the let function to create some variables because our formula is going to become quite complex. At the start, I will add the let function and then we can create our variables. First, we have the lookup value and that's going to be the values from H6 to H9. Then we have the lookup array. This is going to be the item column. Then we have the return array. This is going to be the columns from Q1 to Q4. For the if not found argument, let's set that to be zero. Now, while we're here, let's add the other arguments which are found in XLOOKUP. 
So let's add a variable for match mode, which we will leave as blank. And we will also create a variable for search mode, which we will also leave as blank. We can now replace these values in our calculation. In the index function, the reference to columns Q1 to Q4 of our data table can become the return array. Then in the X match, the range H6 to H9 can become the lookup value. Then the item column of the data table will become the lookup array. X match has similar arguments to X lookup, so let's add in the match mode and also the search mode. In the columns function, the reference to columns Q1 to Q4 will become the return array. And finally, let's replace the zero with the value of our if not found variable. Then we can close the bracket at the end and calculate everything still works correctly. Now we can go back into our formula and make sure that it works with lookup values which are vertical or horizontal. Let's go back and edit the formula. We want to check if the number of columns for the lookup value is equal to one. If it is equal to one, we want to return the existing calculation. If it's not equal to one, it means that it's a horizontal lookup. So let's copy our existing calculation. Then for the if false argument, we're going to paste that and make some changes. For the row num argument inside index, we want to use the sequence function and we want a sequence based on the rows and that is the number of rows in the return array. Then for the col num argument of index, we can use the result of the existing x match function, which means we can delete the previous sequence function that we used for the columns because we no longer need it. And finally, let's add a closing bracket and calculate and it still works, fantastic. Okay, let's now copy that formula into cell H13. We're going to update the lookup value to be the cells I12 to K12. And let's update the lookup array to be the headers for Q1 to Q4. And when we calculate, it works. That means our formula works both vertically and horizontally. We now have a working formula. All that's left for us to do is to convert this into a custom function. At the start of the formula, we can add the lambda function. The parameters that we want to create are the arguments that we would use inside XLOOKUP. So we want to create lookup value, lookup array, and return array. Then the next parameters are optional. So we will place some in square brackets. So open square bracket, if not found, close in square bracket. Then the same for the match mode in square brackets and also the search mode in square brackets. In this scenario, all the variables are in the Lambda function. So we can delete the let and all the variables. Now there's just one more change that we need to make. For the if not found argument, we need to check whether a user has omitted that argument. So rather than just using if not found, we need to use if, we want to check whether it is omitted, and the argument that we want to check is the if not found argument. If it is omitted, then we want to return the NA function. That gives us the NA error. If it's not omitted, then we want to return the value which the user has provided in the if not found argument. We've also used if not found in the row below, so let's copy that code and paste it. And now we're ready to turn this into a custom function. I'll select all the code and copy it. I'll go to the formulas ribbon and select define name. The name of our function is going to be super x lookup. We want workbook scope. We're going to ignore the comment and then we can paste the formula into the refers to box. After that, we just have to click OK. And once we do that, super x lookup has been born. That's amazing. Now all we have to do is go and test it out. In cell I6, I'll type equals super. We can see the super x lookup function. So I'll press tab to accept that. And now let's use it. For the lookup value, we're going to use the range H6 to H9. For the lookup array, we're going to use the item column. For the return array, we're going to use the columns Q1 to Q4. And in this example, let's use the if not found. 
let's set that to zero. And when we calculate, it works. Okay, let's try that again. In cell I13, I'll type equals super X lookup, open bracket. The lookup value is going to be the range I12 to K12. The lookup array is going to be the column headers for Q1 to Q4. And the return array is going to be the values in Q1 to Q4. This time, let's not use the if not found argument. So we will leave that blank. And when we calculate, it returns those values. But if it can't find them, it returns the hash NA error. This is fantastic. This gives us exactly what we want. And the good news is that this function travels with the workbook. So if you send the workbook to somebody else, provided they have a modern version of Excel, they too will see the super XLOOKUP function in the workbook. Now, what happens if you want to use this function in another workbook? Well, that's easy. We copy a cell that contains the super X lookup function, and then we paste that into a cell in a different workbook. And now that workbook also has the super X lookup function. Even if we delete the cell that contains that function, if we type equals super, we can see that super X lookup still exists in that workbook. If you learn something new in this video, then you are going to love our Excel Academy. It contains everything you need to save huge amounts of time, which means that you can make working late a thing of the past. So head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check it out. And once you've done that, why not check out that video? Who knows what you might discover next? Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.